Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in the next session, we're actually going to speak about the next generation of uh, a cyber technology. And uh, you know, we as Israelis, we're so focused on ourselves. So we thought it's actually a great idea if we'll start this session with an external perspective. Uh, we want to invite Mr. Chumpu Lim. Uh, Mr. Lim was appointed chairman uh, of ASTAR in 2007 to lead ASTAR in conducting world-class scientific research and developing human capital for the vibrant, knowledge-based, innovation-driven Singapore. Prior to heading uh, ASTAR, Mr. Lim was permanent secretary at the Ministry of Education from July 2003 to March 2007. Before that, uh, Mr. Lim spent 23 years with the Singapore Armed Forces, and last year, the Office of Chief of Defense Force. Uh, Mr. Lim, I would like to invite you to the stage. Thank you very much for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, Professor Izzy Ben Israel, head of the uh, Yuval Neman Workshop for Science, Technology, and Society. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, shalom. Maybe I should say a few words in Hebrew, but I shall not. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be here at the third annual International Cyber Security Conference. Let me first thank uh, Itzik for inviting me uh, to this event. Um, I must say that uh, the moment he invited me, um, it is very difficult for me to resist because over the years, we have always uh, prevailed on Itzik to do things in Singapore for Singapore and uh, Hue for uh, Singapore. So, you know, for me, uh, it was clearly one that I want to accept. But more importantly, I wanted to accept because Israel is a country that I enjoy visiting. I visited uh, for many years, so I actually welcome the opportunity to be back here. It is also a country that I'm uh, deeply impressed with because for a country that is set against such an adverse environment, you actually have done extremely well. And there are many things that you do that Singapore admire, and this is why you know, I really uh, look forward to coming to Israel. At the same time, on this particular topic on cybersecurity, I believe that this is one topic that is still emerging, still growing, and therefore there's a lot that we can do to share with each other and also to learn from each other, and that's why I'm here. I recognize, of course, that uh, I'm speaking to a very, very sophisticated audience, so there's no need for me to persuade you. Somehow I keep getting all the slides uh, moving over here. Maybe someone is doing some uh, hacking at, the, uh, at presently. <laughs> so I recognize I'm speaking to a very uh, sophisticated audience, so there's no need for me to persuade you on the profound changes to our societies and economies that have been brought about by the rapid advances in the Infocom technology. As we speak, these changes are continuing as more people are participating in the cyberspace. By the end of this year, ITU estimates that the number of individuals using the internet will reach 2.7 billion people, and mobile broadband subscriptions will exceed 2 billion. Apart from this increased reach, ICT has transformed the way we work live, and play. Just take the example of e-commerce. According to Goldman Sachs, global e-commerce sales reached US $570 billion in 2010 and went up to US $820 billion just in two years in the year 2012. The bank also predicts that worldwide e-commerce sales will reach nearly US $1 trillion this year. As a subset of e-commerce, Mobile commerce or m-commerce is also expected to follow in the very same steep growth. Last week, Gartner released a report estimating that global mobile payment transactions would generate US $240 billion this year, and this will increase threefold to US $720 billion by the year 2017. Just in four years, it will increase by threefold. According to this report, much of this growth will come from three countries, South Korea, Singapore, and India. 
ICT has also changed the way we socialize, and all of you know this very well, so I don't intend to elaborate. Like many other countries, Singapore has been transformed by ICT and the internet. The percent of our population who use the internet more than doubled from 36% in 2000 to over 75% in 2010, and growing. ICT is now an integral part of life in Singapore. I would like to believe that the Singapore government has played an important role in facilitating the shifts in the society. In 2007, the government launched the Wireless at Singapore program that offers free wireless broadband access at almost all public places. In 2008, we embarked on building our next generation national broadband net, uh, network to bring fiber optics to all the homes, offices, and buildings. By middle of 2012 or last year, we have installed fiber optics in 95% of the homes and offices, and we should complete the complete rollout sometime this year. This investment in turn have catalyzed the internet service providers to offer more broadband to users at very affordable prices. Today, you can enjoy 300 megabit per second fiber broadband packages for below 40 US dollars a month in Singapore. Apart from the infrastructural development, the Singapore government is also one of the early advocates of offering e-services to the people. Our first e-government action plan was launched in 2000, and since then, more than 1,700 applications are available online. Based on our annual user surveys, Acceptance and use of these online government services have grown over the years. For example, the proportion of taxpayers who e-filed their tax returns grew from 30% in 2000 to nearly 100% in 2013. And such high participation rates are not unusual for many of the other e-services. Of course, it helps in the case of Singapore to have very simple tax rules and, of course, a much lower tax rates compared to many other jurisdictions. In Singapore, e-commerce sales reached 1.1 billion Singapore dollars in 2010, or nearly 4% of the total retail sales for that year. Two years later, it climbed to 3.1 billion, and this is expected to reach 4.4 billion this year. ICT's direct contribution to the Singapore economy has also been rising steadily since 2005. When the total Infocom industry revenue was $38 billion from hardware, software, telecommunications, IT, and content services. The industry has witnessed double-digit growth to reach over $83 billion two years ago in 2011. Moving forward, mobile internet use looks set to become further entrenched as the preferred mode of accessing the internet. In Singapore, mobile commerce saw a dramatic eight-fold jump from $40 million just two years, three years ago to $330 million in 2011. PayPal predicted that M-commerce would grow tenfold to reach $3.1 billion in Singapore in two years' time, by 2015. To align themselves to this shift, the three main mobile network operators have already rolled out near fuel communications last August for 20,000 payment points right across the island. And the government itself has also launched the mobile government at Singapore mobile app two years ago. This is to create even better facilitation for the population to use the government services. The breadth and depth of ICT's reach have left very few facets of life untouched in Singapore. Unfortunately, and as many speakers have spoken before me and have emphasized, this ubiquity also means that cyberspace has now become a very lucrative target for attacks. Being an open and highly connected e economy, very similar to Israel, Singapore is obviously not immune from these attacks, and we have to take appropriate measures to respond to all these threats. To deal with the broad nature of cyber threats and recognizing the limited resources 
of any single entity, Singapore has always emphasized the need for collaboration, both domestically with our internal stakeholders, as well as internationally with our counterparts overseas. This is why this conference is important and interesting to Singapore. In Singapore, the government maintains oversight and policy coordination through a high-level committee created to formulate the national cybersecurity strategies. The National Infocom Security Committee, or NISC, was established in 1997 as the key decision body to set Infocom security policies and strategic directions at the national level. The membership is drawn from many different agencies and is a platform that is intended to balance economic development with national security considerations. I think Melissa showed this balance that's needed between both the desire to grow the economy and, of course, the security of the uh, country. The committee also provides the guidance for our national cybersecurity strategy as encapsulated in our master plans. Our first master plan was from 2005 to 2007, and the master plan was primarily focused on leveling up the capabilities of the public sector to deal with cyber threats. We set up the Cyber Watch Centre, one of the first in our part of the world, to provide round-the-clock monitoring on cyber threats to critical installations in the public sector. To complement this detection capability, we also established the Threat Analysis Centre to gain a better understanding of what we have to contend with. Aside from the public sector, we also initiated efforts to protect the Infocom system of our critical infrastructures under the Critical Infocom Infrastructure Surety Assessment Framework. This was intended to ascertain the readiness and adequacy of the protection measures implemented by infrastructure owners and operators, and most of these are mainly from the private sector. From 2008, we started the second master plan to maintain the protection of the public sector while furthering our efforts on the critical Infocom infrastructure. Recognizing the unique needs of each critical sector, whether it's energy, Infocom, finance, or the transport sectors, the government worked with critical infrastructure owners to assess and develop sector-specific Infocom security requirements. One such program is the Secure and Resilient Internet Infrastructure Code of Practice. This was issued in February of 2011 for the Internet service providers. The code covers the protection of the core Internet infrastructure, such as routers, switches, and critical network components, and also details the objectives and controls necessary to prevent, detect, and respond to the cyber security incidences. The code also allows the ISPs and the Infocom Development Authority to make more informed decisions so that early warning to emerging cyber threats can be developed and the appropriate preventive measures can be taken. For the ISPs, implementing measures consistent with international standards and best, best practices will enable them to better protect business and consumers against cyber attacks. In this second master plan, we also started programs to boost our IT security workforce. Working closely with the private sector, we set up the Association of Infocom Security Professionals to transform Infocom security into a distinctive profession and build a critical pool of Infocom security professionals in Singapore. To boost the number of such professionals, we launched the National Infocom Scholarship in 2008 to draw talent into this particular sector. This scholarship has since been expanded to generate even more talent for the sector. Despite the prevalence of internet use among Singaporeans, very often we find that IT savviness doesn't automatically translate into IT security awareness or best practice. To raise awareness and adoption of essential cybersecurity practices amongst the users, 
We formed the Cybersecurity Awareness Alliance with partners from both public, private, and also the people sector. The alliance aims to engage the people sector and empower them with resources to stay secure online. It does this through various collaborations and programs for the different segments of the population, from young students in the school to working adults. Internationally, Singapore is also an active participant in the global efforts to address cyber threats. In 2008, Singapore hosted the Meridian Conference, which also saw the launch of the Working Group on International Collaboration on Critical Infrastructure Protection, or ICONIC. Singapore leads this working group with members that include Australia, Japan, the Netherlands, UK, US, and the ITU. ICONIC aims to provide governments worldwide with a means to exchange ideas and initiate actions for cooperation on critical infocom infrastructure protection. One outcome of ICONIC's collaborative effort was the development of a self-assessment scorecard on critical infocom infrastructure protection. Finalized towards the end of 2009, this scorecard is a self-service tool for the CI owners, operators, and regulators to monitor the security preparedness of their CIIs on a continual basis. It also serves as a common benchmark for measuring the state of CII security health or readiness within an organization or across an entire sector. Meridian members can access this scorecard via the Meridian website. Singapore's commitment to transnational cybersecurity collaboration is also evident in our regular exchange of information and experiences in regional forums such as the ASEAN Telecommunications and IT Ministers' Meeting and also the Asia-Pacific CERT. Today, we have made substantive, substantial progress towards the protection of the government and also the critical infocom infrastructures. However, one area that uh, we are facing challenge is in educating, persuading our small businesses and the general users to internalize essential cybersecurity practices. But we'll continue to work on this. So going forward, we will continue to reinforce our efforts on securing our government and critical infocom infrastructures while broadening our, effort, our scope to include the smaller businesses that make up the supply chain, as well as individual users who form the broad base of the Infocom ecosystem. Given the rapid evolution of Infocom technology and threats, we recognize that it is insufficient to rely solely on off-the-shelf off the solutions. The Singapore government has been investing significantly on Infocom with an average span of over US $1 billion every year since 2011. At the same time, our research efforts have produced some encouraging results so far. This includes developing the lightweight cryptography that was adopted by ISO as an international standard, fraud detection software that was developed for Visa International, and the smart grid security framework developed for charging electric vehicles. We want to build on these efforts to do more to cultivate an even more conducive environment for research and innovation. We recognize the strength of each player in the research and innovation landscape, the academia's push for breakthrough discovery, the industry's goal to constantly find marketable solutions, and the government's desire to secure the cyberspace for both business and society. We need to explore new frameworks and funding schemes to stimulate more meaningful and impactful research collaborations between public and private, and also between public and public organizations, while ensuring that the most deserving solutions get funded. We are also looking forward to working with our international partners to build such collaborations. And obviously, Israel is one country that we look towards for meaningful collaborations. Our work is cut out for us to do more to create and sustain a vibrant research environment, to push the envelope in order to enhance our cybersecurity 
and also create new opportunities for our continued growth. And I think this is something that your President mentioned this morning. In conclusion, to deal with the dynamic changes of the cyber landscape, Singapore fosters and maintains close partnership among our public, private, and also the people sector to boost the cybersecurity capabilities of each of these sectors through a decentralized but somewhat coordinated approach. At the same time, along this journey, we believe that collaborations and partnerships provide the key, and we look forward to working with many of you here in a mutually beneficial way. So with that, I wish all of you an enjoyable conference. Thank you very much. Tudarabha.